What's up guys, welcome back. A couple weeks ago we did this recipe for Instagram and it was super popular, so it's only right that I bring it over here to YouTube. This is my recipe for creamy salmon pasta. It's a super simple one pan and one pot recipe that comes together in about 30 minutes or less. But before we get into that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, let's cover these ingredients. Here I have one diced yellow onion. We've got about a quarter cup or so of diced parsley, a quarter cup of chopped sun-dried tomatoes, three cloves of diced garlic, two cups of baby spinach, about four slices of thick cut bacon, two cups of heavy cream, a little white wine to sip on and to deglaze the pan. We've got some Parmesan cheese, a little flour and butter to thicken things up. And of course, we've got our two salmon fillets. This pasta recipe is enough for four to six servings. So if you're making four to six servings, you may wanna go with four pieces of salmon. And we're making pasta, right? So we gotta have some Maffaldini pasta. I get a lot of questions about this pasta. You can find it at your local Whole Foods or Wegmans. If you have a Wegmans, it's always at Whole Foods as well. Use whatever pasta you have on hand though. So it's super simple to always salt your pasta water. I'm gonna go into the boiling water with about two tablespoons of kosher salt. And then we'll add the pasta noodles. All right, my friends, now we're gonna go ahead and season the salmon. So for me, I like to season my presentation side last. That way the seasoning is nice and even, which is gonna result in an even color. So we're gonna present this with the other side of the salmon on top of the pasta. So we're gonna season this side first. Going down with a little bit of Tony's or any Cajun or Creole seasoning will get the job done. A little bit of all purpose seasoning. And then just a pinch of chili powder. The chili powder is there mostly for color. It's gonna give it that nice blackened salmon look. That's gonna look really nice up against that white sauce that we're going with today. So all purpose, any all purpose will work. If you don't have mine, just use whatever your favorite is. All purpose, Tony's or any Cajun seasoning and a light and a real light layer of chili powder. There we go. We're gonna warm our nonstick skillet over medium heat. To that, I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons of avocado oil. I like to use avocado oil anytime I'm searing something at high heat because it has a high smoke point, about 500 degrees or so. We're also gonna add some butter to the party a little bit later. The other reason I like to use avocado oil is because we're using some butter later to base the salmon and that is gonna raise the overall smoke point of the butter because we don't want that butter to burn. Once that skillet gets nice and hot, we're going down with our salmon presentation side down so we get nice even color. I like to use the back of my fingers or my hand to kind of press down to make sure that the salmon makes maximum surface area contact. We want to make sure that we get a nice, even, beautiful color on that salmon. So just give it about 90 seconds per side. We're going to flip it over here in just a moment. All right, so after about 90 seconds, we've reached the color that we're looking for. I'm going to use my fish spatula to flip it over like so. Beautiful color on the salmon there. So at this point, we're gonna reduce the heat and add about a tablespoon or two of butter because butter makes everything better. Remember guys, we're here for a good time, not a long time. We definitely are gonna drain a little bit of this fat before we make our pasta sauce though, so don't call my uh, cardiologist on me. We're gonna melt that butter and then just baste the salmon and all that flavor. So at this point, we've got the color that we're looking for. We're gonna finish the salmon in a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes or until it reaches about 130 degrees internal temperature, which is the temperature I like for my salmon. All right, for the health police in the comments, we did drain off about everything except one tablespoon or so of that residual oil and butter. And now it's about to get real healthy. We're going in with four slices of bacon. We're gonna turn our heat on to medium and allow that bacon to get nice and crispy for us. 
I'm using the same skillet that we cooked the salmon, that way we lock in all that flavor. So we're working over medium heat right now. We just want that bacon to render some of its fat and begin to get crispy. At that point, if there's any excess fat, we'll drain it. We wanna keep about a tablespoon or two in there though for our sauce. Your house is gonna be smelling absolutely amazing. Wait till that onion and garlic and sun-dried tomatoes get in there. And again, the bacon is optional for the pork patrol. You can go with beef bacon or just leave it out completely. For the rest of us though, a little bacon is gonna amplify this recipe quite a bit. At this point, this is exactly what we're looking for. Most of the fat's rendered. We got a nice crispy piece of bacon in there, or several pieces of bacon, I should say. And we have quite a bit of oil. We're gonna drain most of that, leave it behind about a tablespoon or two tablespoons. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. The next guest to arrive to the flavor party is the onion and the sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna add the garlic in in just a moment. You wanna give this a head start because garlic has a tendency to burn, so you don't wanna add it too early. And man, I can't wait for you guys to smell this. So after that head start, now we're gonna go ahead and add in our garlic, give that a good mix. And then we're gonna add our flour to help thicken up the sauce a bit. And then we're gonna deglaze with a little dry white wine. That step's optional. If you don't wanna use wine when you're cooking, no big deal. Feel free to use a little chicken broth or something like that a little pasta water, just something to get all that fond up off the bottom of the skillet. No flavor left behind. A couple teaspoons of all-purpose flour. Again, just to act as a thickening agent, almost making a roux basically right now. Not very traditional with Alfredo, but this is a good way to cheat if you want your sauce to be nice and thick. Allow that raw flour taste to cook off. Only takes about a minute or so, 90 seconds maybe. And now for the fun part, we're going in with about a half cup of dry white wine. Make sure you taste as you go. Not bad. I'm more of a red guy myself. At this point, you wanna increase the heat to high because you wanna cook off all the alcohol, leaving behind the flavor of the wine, which is gonna add a little bit of acidity and kinda of cut through some of the fat that's in here. You can get the same effect if you were to use lemon juice. For those of you that don't wanna use wine, no big deal. As you can see, we got a nice paste-like consistency right here, and now it's time to go in with the heavy cream. Two cups of heavy cream. Give that a good mix over medium-high heat. Wanna bring that to a simmer. All right, so as you can see, guys, we're starting to reach a simmer. I'm gonna get in there with the whisk just to make sure everything's nice and smooth, smoother than a three-day weekend. Now it's time to season this up. I'm going in with a little bit of chicken bouillon powder. This is kind of a cheat code. It's gonna add a lot of concentrated flavor. I find myself adding a pinch of this to a lot of recipes. This is something you definitely wanna keep in your pantry. Don't go too crazy with it, just a pinch. We're gonna add some red pepper flakes for heat. That's totally optional. If you don't like spice, you can leave it out. And then we're going in with some of my all-purpose seasoning. If you don't have this, guys, use whatever your favorite all-purpose seasoning is. Or if you want to buy mine, you can get yours via the link in the description box below. Give that a good mix. We're going to start tasting as we go to make sure the flavors are just right. And then we're going in with our Parmesan cheese. One quick pro tip is to not over-season the sauce before you add your Parmesan. The reason for that is Parmesan cheese has a lot of salt already in it. So you don't want to get too crazy with the salt before you add the Parmesan because then your sauce is gonna to be too salty. So always taste as you go. Make sure you, you know, adjust the flavor to your preference as I always say. But right now we got us a nice sauce on our hands. All right, so we've reached the consistency that we're looking for on our sauce. And at this point I'm ready to add the Parmesan cheese. So what you wanna do is reduce the heat down to low. You never wanna add cheese to your sauce when it's too hot because it'll start to separate. I'm gonna grate in some fresh Parmesan cheese because why the hell not? But you can use the pre-grated stuff, whatever floats your boat. Fresh is best though, but use whatever you got on hand. I'm gonna go in with about a cup and a half into the sauce and then about another half cup or so for garnish depending on you know how many servings you got. Now we're just gonna work that Parmesan cheese into our sauce over low heat. You can bump it up to medium if you want to, but there's no need to rush the process. If at any point you notice that your sauce is too thick, 
You can go in with a little bit of pasta water if needed. At this point, I don't think we need it though, but I'm gonna keep it at the ready just in case. So now over medium low heat, we're going in with our spinach because health, about two cups of baby spinach going in. And you just wanna stir that in until it wilts down and incorporates itself into the sauce. And now the last pro tip of the day, I believe, is you wanna always finish cooking your noodles in the sauce. So we're gonna add those Malfodini noodles or whatever noodles you can find into our delicious sauce that we just made. Use your tongs to really roll those noodles into the sauce. Give them some time to absorb all that flavor. Oh man, this is gonna be good. You guys have got to give this recipe a try. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know what other recipes you wanna see. Let me know what fish you would serve this with other than salmon, because I know you guys are, well, actually, you guys probably aren't tired of salmon, because nobody gets tired of salmon. But if you are, let me know what else you would serve this with. It's great with chicken. A little chicken breast as well would work here. All right, my friends, it's time to plate this up. We have our pasta and a nice mound with some height. That's what you want to see for your plating. And we have some perfectly cooked salmon fresh out of the oven. Look at that. We've allowed the salmon to cool for a couple minutes, which is important. Now we're gonna go ahead and garnish this up with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Oh man, don't be shy with this stuff, guys. Get some on your pasta as well. And last but not least, a little fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color. And that, my friends, is a beautiful salmon pasta in 30 minutes or less. Quick weeknight meal. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. And now for my favorite part of the day, it's time to get in there for a taste test. I have found my fork and it's time to dig in. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, guys, I got a feeling this is gonna get inducted into the Fork Drop Hall of Fame. We got some flaky, delicious salmon. Come on, cooperate for me. You guys have got to try this one. 